This is Land of Havila, Psalm 71. It's anonymous and 24 verses. Verse 1. In you, Yahweh, I take refuge. Never let me be disappointed. Deliver me in your righteousness and rescue me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Comment in verse 3, quote, Give the command to save me, end quote. That's the basis of our salvation. When God issues a command to save us, we're saved. For our own part in our salvation, if we could call it our own, the Bible says, quote, He who endures to the end will be saved, Matthew 10, 22. And, quote, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, Mark 16, 16. And, quote, I'm the door, and if anyone enters in by me, he'll be saved, and will go out and in and find pasture, John 10, 9. And, quote, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved, Joel 2, 32, Acts 2, 21, and Romans 10, 12. And, quote, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved, Acts 16, 31. And, quote, if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved, Romans 10, 9. But the basis of our salvation is that God issues the command to save us. The difference between Calvinist and Arminianist theology is whether God called out his saved ones before the foundation of the world and foreordained them to be saved, as supported by Romans 8.29, Ephesians 1.4, Ephesians 1.11, Revelation 13.8, and Revelation 17.8, or whether God waits to issue the command of salvation until we've satisfied some requirement. It doesn't matter when he issues the command as long as he issues it, but let's not be slack in satisfying the requirements. We can all pray as in verse 3, give the command to save me. But what's the idea here? Salvation from what? It could be salvation from some temporal situation or salvation eternally or both. In either case, God give the command to save me. Verse 4. Rescue me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, Lord Yahweh, my confidence from my youth. I've relied on you from the womb. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. I'll always praise you. I'm a marvel to many, but you are my strong refuge. Comment, sorting through various translations, when the psalmist says, I'm a marvel to many, he probably means that People are marveling at all the trouble he's in, how hopeless the situation is. But you're my strong refuge, he says. It looks bleak, but it's an illusion since God can fix it. Looking forward to when God does fix it, verse 8. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, with your honor all day long. Don't reject me in my old age. Don't forsake me when my strength fails. For my enemies talk about me. Those who watch for my soul conspire together, saying... God has forsaken him. Pursue and take him, for no one will rescue him. Comment, this psalm's anonymous, so we don't know if it was David or not. But David was in this situation in 1 Kings chapter 1, that his enemies were conspiring against him in his old age, thinking he couldn't do anything about it. He was so old he couldn't keep track of his kingdom. It was all he could do to stay warm. One of his sons was holding a coronation party for himself because he figured his old man was so senile he wouldn't even know about it. But as the chapter explains, God delivered David from that. He took the reins back just long enough to crown Solomon, as Solomon was the one God had ordained, 1 Chronicles 29.1. At the same time, David saved his own life, Solomon's life, and the life of Solomon's mother, verse 12. God, don't be far from me. My God, hurry to help me. Let my accusers be disappointed and consumed. Let them be covered with disgrace and scorn who want to harm me but I'll always hope and will add to all of your praise. Comment in verse 14, I'll always hope, quote, And nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4, 6. The whole verse of the psalm is, I'll always hope and will add to all of your praise. When God answers, he'll praise him even more. Verse 15, My mouth will tell about your righteousness and of your salvation all day though I don't know its full measure. I'll come with the mighty acts of the Lord Yahweh. I'll make mention of your righteousness, even of yours alone. Comment, I'll come with the mighty acts of the Lord Yahweh. In the three sentences before and two sentences after, he'll testify of what God did. 
So it's probably another way of saying he'll testify of what God did. Since he said it six times in a row, and he's about to say it a seventh, maybe when God comes through for us, we should also speak up about it. Verse 17, God, you have taught me from my youth. Until now, I've declared your wondrous works. Yes, even when I'm old and gray-haired, God, don't forsake me. Until I've declared your strength to the next generation, your might to everyone who is to come. Come your narrator has some gray hair, and by some accounts, he's old. He's finding out that the current generation of youngsters is wide open to the gospel, incredibly open. It's a marvel of our time how open they are. So don't forsake me, God, until I've declared your strength to the next generation, your might to everyone who is to come. Verse 19. Your righteousness also, God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. God, who is like you? You who have shown us many and bitter troubles, you'll let me live. You'll bring us up again from the depths of the earth. Comment God has shown the psalmist many and bitter troubles in verse 20. If it weren't for bitter troubles, many of the psalms wouldn't exist. But in the next statement of the psalm, you'll bring us up again from the depths of the earth. No matter how bad it gets, he'll bring us up. In Jacob's old age, he said, few and evil have been the days of the years of my life. In other words, there's been a lot of misery packed in the short time I've lived. But also in his old age, he called God the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, Genesis 48:15. We can expect trouble and we can expect deliverance, verse 21. Increase my honor and comfort me again. I'll also praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I sing praises to you with the lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips shall shout for joy. My soul, which you have redeemed, sings praises to you. My tongue will also talk about your righteousness all day long, for they're disappointed and they're confounded who want to harm me. Comment, they are confounded who want to harm him. They're thinking, how did he escape this time? How did he get out of that? It was by God. Psalm 72 is next. <laughs> 